In this video, we're going to start the CUDA software free worksheet solving proportions. And you can find it under the Algebra 1 tab, and the directions are to solve each proportion. In order to solve a proportion, we must calculate what the variable is equal to. Our variable in this case is n, so we're going to have to isolate that n and then solve. In order to do that, we're going to start by multiplying both sides by 10. Multiplying both sides by 10, we'll have 100 over 8, and that's equal to, the tens will cancel out since 10 divided by 10 is 1, and n times 1 is n. So then on our calculator, we'll type 100 divided by 8, and that'll give us 12.5. So the answer for number 1 is 12.5. So 10 over 8 is the same as 12.5 over 10. Number 2 in order to isolate the x now, we're going to multiply by 3. Multiplying by 3, 3 times 7 is 21, and that's all over 5, and that's equal to x, since 3 divided by 3 is 1, and x times 1 is x. Now to our calculator, we're going to type 21 divided by 5 and get 4.2 as the solution for number 2. In number 3, we're going to multiply both sides by 10. And doing that, the 10s will cancel out on the right-hand side. 10 times 9 is 90. So we'll have 90 over 6 equivalent to x. Typing that in on our calculator, 90 divided by 6 is going to be equal to 15. You could also just simplify this down and know that 90 divided by 6 is the same as 45 over 3. And that is 15. In number 4, we're going to have to isolate this n. However, the n is on the denominator, so we're going to have to multiply both sides by n. So the n will cancel out to have 7 equal to 8 over 7 times n. So now we need to get this 7 out of the denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides by 7. The 7s will cancel each other out on the right, and we'll be left with 49 equal to 8 times n so 8n. Then divide both sides by 8 to get that 49 over 8 is equal to n, and we type that into our calculator. We'll get 6.125. So 6.125 is equal to n. Now let me show you a simpler way to solve when you have a variable in the bottom of a proportion. I'm just going to rewrite the problem in number 4. We have 7 over n equivalent to 8 over 7. Now essentially what we did, we multiplied both sides by n, then we multiplied both sides by 7, and then we divided by 8. So we multiplied both sides by n, and multiplied both sides by 7, and then divide by 8. We can reduce multiplying by n and multiplying by 7 to one simple step. And this is known as cross multiplication. So we're going to take the denominator of one fraction and multiply it to the numerator of the other fraction on the other side of the equation. And then we're going to take the denominator of that and then multiply it to the other numerator on the other side of the equation. So we're essentially multiplying both sides by n and both sides by 7 in the same step. So 7 times 7, that's going to be 49, and 49 is equal to n times 8, or 8n. Now you see all we have to do is divide by 8 to get 49 over 8 equaling n. And then we just type that into our calculator to get 6 and 125 hundredths, the answer to number 4. Let's go into number 5. In number 5, our variable is in the bottom of the proportion again, so we're going to start by cross-multiplying and then solving for x. So 4 times x, or x times 4, is 4x, and that's equal to 3 times 8. So we have 4x equal to 24, so we'll divide both sides by 4 to get that x is equal to 6. So 4 thirds is equal to 8 sixths. In number 6, we still have our variable in the bottom of the proportion. However, 
we're going to have to cross multiply with the entire quantity b plus 5. So we're going to take b plus 5, multiply it to 10, and then we're going to take 5 and multiply it to 7. So we'll have 10 times b plus 5, and that's going to be equal to 5 times 7. Distributing the 10, we'll get 10b plus 50 equals 5 times 7, which is 35. Subtract by 50 on both sides to get that 10b is equivalent to negative 15. Divide both sides by 10, and we'll get that b is equal to negative 15 over 10. If you want to use your calculator, go ahead and type it in. 15 divided by 10, that's going to be 1.5. But the 15 is negative, so we're going to have negative 1.5 as the answer for number 6. Again, we're going to have to multiply the entire quantity, b minus 1, to the numerator of the other fraction, and then the denominator of 7 to the numerator of the other fraction. So b minus 1 gets multiplied to 9, and 7 gets multiplied to 6. Writing that out, we'll have 9 times b minus 1 equal to 7 times 6. We're going to distribute that 9, so the 9 gets multiplied to the b, and the 9 gets multiplied to the 1. 9 times b is 9b, 9 times 1 is 9, and we're subtracting that, and then 7 times 6 is 42. So we're going to add 9 to both sides to get that 9b is equal to 42 plus 9, which is 51. Divide both sides by 9, and we'll get that b is equal to 51 divided by 9, which when we type that into our calculator, 51 divided by 9 equals 5 and 6 tenths repeating. So 5.667. Moving on to number 8, we have 4 over m minus 8 is equal to 8 over 2. Cross multiplying again, we'll get 8 times m minus 8 equal to 2 times 4. Distributing that 8, 8 times m is 8m, 8 times 8 is 64. So 8m minus 64 equals 2 times 4, which is 8. We're going to add 64 to both sides to get that 8m is equal to 72. Then when we divide by 8, we know that 8 goes into 72 evenly, and that's going to be 9 times. So m is equal to 9 in number 8. Our variable this time is in the numerator, so it's not necessary to cross multiply. But I'll go ahead and solve this by cross multiplying, and I'll also solve it without cross multiplying just to show you that both are equal. So I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 9. When I do this, I'll get 9 times 5, which is 45, all over 6, and that's equal to 7n plus 9. Then I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. I'll be left with 7n on the right, and that's going to be equal to 45 over 6 minus 9. That's going to be negative 1.5. All we have left to do is to divide by 7. Negative 1.5 divided by 7 is equal to n. So 1.5 divided by 7 equals 0.214. However, that was a negative divided by a positive, so it's a negative 0 0.214 as the solution in number 9. Now I'll go ahead and cross multiply for you. If we're cross multiplying, the 6 gets multiplied to the 7n plus 9, and that's going to be equal to the 5 times 9. 6 times 7 is 42 times n. 6 times 9 is going to be 54, and that's equal to 5 times 9, which is 45. When I subtract 54 from both sides, I get that 42n is equal to negative 9. Then I divide both sides by 42. So n is going to be equal to negative 9 over 42. And 9 divided by 42, again, is 0.214. But that was a negative divided by a positive. 
so negative 0 0.214. And you can see that either method will get you to the correct answer. Lastly, in this video, I'll do number 10, and in the next video, I'll finish out the worksheet doing numbers 11 through 20. Before I go over the answer to this, please like this video and also subscribe to my channel. Each like and subscription is greatly appreciated, and it lets me know that you guys are finding these videos helpful. Also, feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions on this video or if you have other questions about proportions that you need clarified. So in number 10, again, it's not necessary to cross multiply, but let's go ahead. We're going to do 9 times r minus 3, and that's going to be equal to 6 times 4. So we'll have 9r minus 27 equal to 24. We're going to add 27 to both sides to get that 9r is equal to 51. Then we'll divide both sides by 9 to get that r is equal to 51 over 9. When we type that into our calculator, 51 divided by 9 is equal to 5 and 6 tenths repeating. So we can write that as 5.667 for number 10. Continue on to the next video where I'll finish out this worksheet.